Hello to you. Welcome to The Reality Show. So good to be with you once again, sharing the story of a life touched and changed by the sheer reality of knowing Jesus. You know, the Bible tells us that the things we face in this world, in our lives, uh, the traditions of man and our difficulties and problems are but a shadow. The reality of real life can only be found in a real relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Well, on the reality show today, we're privileged to have a, a couple working in Kenya, Derek and Penny Oliver. Derek and Penny had a lovely home near London in England, and they sold it. They sold all they had. They gave it all up as if for a pearl of great worth to go start a work in Kenya among disadvantaged children. They wanted to reveal the wide open love of God to the community. They started a ministry called Route 61, and we're going to be finding out all about that and how they were sold out for Jesus today on The Reality Show. Derek and Penny, thank you so much for joining us. It's really good to have you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us on. Fantastic. Well, yes, uh, I did uh, introduce just there that you, you gave it all up to serve Jesus. So, uh, Derek, tell us, uh, how did it all come together? You had this lovely home in London and God called you. Tell us about that. That's a beautiful summary that you gave there, Dudley, mm. and it all sounded so simple and so easy to do, but it didn't really happen quite so quickly and without any resistance on my part or, or Penny's part. Mm. Um, the reason we came to Kenya is simply because God ambushed us. Um, it wasn't something we were looking for. It wasn't something we had ever dreamed of doing or had any, any thought of doing. Um, but we went through a huge process, and that process, as you have said, was beautifully orchestrated by God, and it just involved taking a step-by-step -step approach. Uh, little by little, he, he wooed us, and he invited us to step into this destiny that he had, had predestined for us. And it all began with, uh, I suppose, dissatisfaction in my own heart, particularly, and a very dark season of my life where I just became very disillusioned, um, very dissatisfied, found life very unfulfilling in what I was doing. And I just really felt in the depth of my being that there just had to be so much more mm -hmm. than what I was experiencing in my relationship with God, in my marriage, in, in life in its entirety. And God just so beautifully and so gently and so lovingly offered me his hand and said, would you just like to step into this destiny with me? And as I said, he did step by step. So he, the first thing he said was, would you just give up your job? And at the time that was a breath of fresh air to me and I did that. But then very quickly, a few other things started to come up as, uh, as I did that one step. And uh, it, the next thing was, would you give up your house? Would you give up your belongings? And um, the, the, the more we got into it, the more, more difficult it became because even though, even though God had asked us to do certain things, we actually clung on quite tightly to a few things. But he's very patient and he's very kind. And he's, uh, he knows exactly what we need and he knows exactly what we need to hear. And uh, he just got us to this beautiful place where ultimately he invited us to come on a short-term mission. We'd actually left all the, those things behind and he just said, would you just come and explore and visit Kenya? And we did that. And Penny's got a very beautiful story about what God said to her at that very moment, which was quite stirred, quite spe specific to you and quite profound, yet simple. Um, would you like to share that? Yeah, go, go ahead, Penny. Let us tell us the story. Yeah, hi. Um, I think often we all have a, an amazing story that's combined of many smaller stories and isn't that the way that God works, you know, bringing different things and different stories all together? And so getting here, as Derek's already said, was a journey. There were so many small, intricate details. But the, I think what Derek is talking about is actually we'd, we'd sold the house. In fact, we sold the house when recession hit the UK and it made no human sense to sell the house. We'd only had it for two years, and yet God very clearly said, sell the house. So that was a, a step of faith. And beautifully, that went through. It went through before it even officially got on the market, which was unheard of. It was sold to Christians um, who brought it at their price. It was actually higher than we brought it 
two years earlier at the height of the house prices prices and the market. And so that was in itself a miracle and a great story. But the, the story that Derek was talking about is when God actually spoke very clearly. I had been challenged, as Derek said, we'd been invited on the mission trip, but I was really challenged by the director of the, the charity that had asked us to go out. And he said, I really want you to pray about coming to Kenya. And at the time, I, I can remember thinking, what's there to pray about? There's, you know, I, we have this opportunity to visit Africa. There's something um, amazing about that in itself. You know, how could you even think about not going on a mission trip to somewhere in Africa? And um, so I said, OK, I will I will pray. And I was spending time with um, God and he gave me a picture and the picture was of a plane and the wheels, uh, the wheels, the actual um, steps with wheels that actually go up to the plane door. I'm sure we all know those. Um, this, yeah. And he showed me the plane, the open door, the steps going up to the plane. And he said, if you ever get on the plane, your life will never be the same again. And I kind of remember saying, but God, of course, my life will never be the same again. I'm going to go to Kenya. And then he said it again. And I can remember feeling the weight of those words. And it was almost a challenge to me and everything that I had ever known. And it was the challenge of, will you be willing to trust me to actually walk in a path that will absolutely be so different from anything that you've ever known. And I can remember thinking, absolutely, because everything that I have ever known didn't satisfy. Mm. We'd had this hunger for more of God. We wanted more of his kingdom. We wanted to uh, be, I don't know, I think we knew that there was a calling on our lives we just didn't understand or know uh, what it was. But yeah, so that was my, uh, very simple picture in one way, but it was the picture that I've held on to and known without doubt that I wanted to step on the plane and I absolutely didn't mind my life being turned upside down. Yeah. I think that's a really good point that Penny makes there that it's okay that not to know. It's okay not yeah. to have all the next step in place. Um, just take the step that's in front of you. Just take the step that God is making obvious the, the part of the path that is illuminating for you. Just step into that. Because once we actually landed in Kenya, everything just changed. And it's almost like we were, we'd been repotted and placed into an environment though where we just fit. It was almost like the environment of the UK wasn't conducive to, for us to grow in the ways that God had made us to grow. And it was when we came into this new environment, into this place, everything just made sense and that the real desire and the fulfillment it just burst forth and very very quickly god just said could he asked us the question both separate on uh, separate occasions he actually asked us he said could you see yourselves living here i remember i've been playing football with some boys in the heat of the day which i don't really recommend especially when you're getting later on in life and mm -hmm. i remember collapsing on my bed totally exhausted and god just came with that gentle still small voice and he said could you see yourself living here and i just pondered for a moment i just thought absolutely i could because he just felt absolutely mm -hmm. right and i think for people listening today if you, you want to step into god's destiny just take that one step just take that one step at a time and it will just make sense at that right time. And you don't know what you don't know. And you don't know, you, you're just waiting maybe for that, that certain circumstances, certain events and things to take place around you that will just mm. be perfect and right. And at that moment, those seeds that have laid dormant in you for years will just start bursting into life, roots will form, and you'll just know. And it's just, uh, it's, we don't regret it. We, we don't, we, we look back and it's the best thing that ever happened to us. Amazing. So how long have you actually been in Kenya? Penny, do you want to ask that or shall I? <laughs> well, okay, so, yeah. so we've been here since 2010. 
So yeah, for the past, uh, it's our thirteenth year this year. We did have one year where we came back to the UK for a time of furlough, oh. but you know, Kenya now feels so much more like home. Um, we used to go back to the UK for a short-term trip, but I say go home to the UK. It doesn't feel like home anymore. We feel more familiar, more at home here, and more comfortable here than we actually do Fantastic. back in the UK. Fantastic. <laughs> you know, that's amazing. And, and how God prepares us, uh, Penny. And, and I love that picture that God gives. You know, God gives pictures in our minds. I always explain it like this. It's a picture or a thought or an idea that comes into my mind before I can even think it. <laughs> and that's God. Yes. Yeah. You know, you're not thinking yeah. about a situation and suddenly you have a word in your head or a picture in your eyes, so to speak, in your mind's eye uh, of what God mm -hmm. wants you to do. And I love that because as you rightly described, it was a, a, a ladder, a, you know, steps going up to the plane. And Derek, you just said, we have to take step by step and God opens those doors for us. You know, um, I did allude to uh, one of the parables that Jesus taught about, um, uh, you know, giving it all up for the sake of the kingdom. He says uh, that um, a man found a pearl of great value and he went home and he sold all he had to buy that pearl. He says another man found a, f a field with a treasure in the field and that treasure was so valuable and desirable that he went home and he sold everything he had to buy that field. They were sold out for Jesus. And uh, you know what comes to mind, even as you're speaking, is uh, if I go down to a marketplace and I've got you know, a hoard of apples and I'm going to sell my apples and I set up my store and I put out all my apples and gradually one by one or 12 by 12, the apples get sold until eventually there's nothing left. And somebody comes to my store and they say, can I have an apple plea? And I'd have, have to say to him, sorry, I'm all sold out. There's nothing left. And that's, I believe, what it means to be sold out for Jesus. Nothing left of me, as Derek and Penny have expressed today. So if you've just joined us on The Reality Show, thank you so much for clicking on in, perhaps on the internet, watching us uh, on television. It's really good to have your company. Towards the end of today's show, I'm going to give my email address, and I'd love to hear from you. Uh, please do join us. We're speaking to Derek and Penny Oliver who did just that, gave it all up, had a lovely home in, uh, near London in the UK, gave it all up and have moved to Kenya, the hot climate of Kenya, completely different to the climate of, of the UK, to set up a home and set up a ministry. Derek and Penny, thank you so much for joining us. You've founded a ministry um, called Route 61. Tell us about it. What is Route 61? So the name Route 61, often people say, that's a very strange name. Where does that come from? And it's um, really sort of about Isaiah chapter 61 mm -hmm. in the Old Testament of the Bible. And we chose it because it's the, the scripture that Jesus ch chose when he came to that moment of defining his ministry mm -hmm. on earth. And he, un he unrolled that 400 year, year old scroll, 400 years old when Jesus was reading from it. And he, he then declared that that was now in the fulfillment in their listening. And it's all about and the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has sent me to send good news to the poor, to the mm. humble, to uh, bind up the brokenhearted, to bring and proclaim release to captives and to set prisoners free. And it's just so significant for us because Route 61 actually works with children and their families through association, but mainly children who are estranged from parents, and have found themselves within what is the juvenile justice system here in Kenya. Um, just to clarify, even though it's the juvenile justice system, that doesn't mean all of those children are in conflict with the law. Some of them are there for care and protection, um, but all of them have been separated from the most important people in their lives. Some of them maybe never knew those people. Some of them have been, maybe, maybe those people, and I'm talking about their parents, Maybe they're there, but emotionally they're separated. Uh, but for every one of those children in that institution, they are physically separated from those children. And uh, where their parents can't be, we are. And we go and we represent the love of God, not directly. We do it through an amazing team of Kenyans whose, whose role is first and foremost to go and stand where a parent can't be, to be a, a mentor and a guardian, and to point those young people to the father of or from whom every family mm. on, in heaven and earth derives its name, the Eternal Father. And um, we've just, we just see some beautiful transformations in the hearts of children as they, re they receive the love of the perfect Father, the Father that they've always longed for. Um, maybe we'll get a chance to share some of those testimonies with you, but it's such a rewarding, beautiful um, 
Mm. opportunity, gift that God has given us. And we're just so thankful for that. Fantastic. Hold that thought. I'm going to ask you for a testimony in just a second. So, so Penny, you're dealing with these, these kids and uh, a juvenile justice system, as you've well alluded to, is, uh, uh, can often involve children that have, yes, you know, contra- uh, broken the law or got involved in crime and violence. How do you feel dealing with children like this as a, as a, a white woman from the United Kingdom serving these lovely kids in Kenya? How does it affect you? Wow, that's a really good and it's a really big question. And I think um, time and experience takes you on a journey. Um, And so let me start at the beginning, middle and where I am now, for example. So I think originally when we first came from the UK, it did take us a, a long time not to almost like look with our Western eyes and judge what we were seeing through our Western eyes. And of course, you know, we I'd be upset. I couldn't believe some of the stories. I couldn't understand why the justice system didn't feel very like it, it was actually bringing justice, particularly for these children. Um, and so as God used almost like my experience here, I then got to the point of almost got to a point where my heart was hardened. It was really interesting, actually. And I became so detached that actually their stories didn't affect me anymore. And that was part of my story with my relationship with God, because actually I realized that I'd shut my heart down to cope with the stories. And that was part of him then revealing more of his heart towards me and showing how he deals with compassion with these children but also how he can bring hope and he sees way beyond their initial story he way he he sees to the person not only that he's created them to be but with a future that also can, can be theirs and so I don't know if that makes sense. I think my almost like my glasses of how I see these kiddies now is different. I absolutely have compassion on them, but I feel very differently from what I used to. I see them more as an individual. I see them more as a precious, precious child of the father who is there in front of me and whose ears can hear the good news and whose heart and life can be massively transformed because of Jesus. And so I've been on a journey and of how to heal, to deal with that. But I think that's come also with a deepening of my relationship with Jesus and to know that if I now get so touched and disturbed by stories, that actually he really is the God of all comfort and I can go and spend time with him and kind of process that with him. Mm-hmm. Amazing, I- amazing. So, so Derek, um, tell us a story. Tell us a story of your, your ministry and success. I'd like to share a story of a, a young boy named, I'm going to change his name. His name is, we're going to call him Ahmed. And Ahmed is a, a Muslim boy because uh, there are some Muslims here in Kenya as well as predominantly Christian. Um, Ahmed came to the remand home and he was incredibly angry. Mm. Um, He turned out to be quite a a tyrant, a bully in the institution. Um, But he was really just pushing people away because he felt such acute rejection in his own heart. And that's actually this is actually a testimony of one of our our team named Pastor Jacob, who is our chaplain that goes in faithfully every week into these institutions. And um, one day he was just sharing with Ahmed and Ahmed actually gave him the opportunity Mm. to pray with him. Um, Not instantly. You know, trust is something that is built over consistent visits, time, uh, being faithful in what you're saying and being there and just listening. So Jacob spends a lot of time just investing in those relationships with these boys. And Ahmed actually responded. He says, yeah, you can pray for me. And you can pray for me in the name of Jesus, which is a miracle in itself. So they prayed, and then afterwards, Jacob looked at Ahmed, and he just put his arms and his, his hands on his shoulders. He looked him in the face. He said, "Ahmed, one of the things that we like to do with Route 61, it's um, a little bit different. It's we, it's it's sacramental for us. Sometimes we like to embrace someone 
but it's not me that is embracing you. I'm going to embrace you and I'm going to stand in the place of God. So as I hold you and I pray for you, I'm going to pray that my arms would be the arms of God holding you. And I'm going to pray that his love would just come into your heart. Mm. And he asked for permission to do that. And Ahmed gave him that permission. So Jacob did exactly that. He just took this young boy and he does this. I've seen him do this so many times and it's so, so powerful. He held this boy in his arms. And Ahmed just started to shake as he sobbed, physically began to sob. But this is a hard boy. Um, and Jacob just held him and allowed him to, to shed his tears. And at the end, he just said, what's, what's going on, Ahmed? And Ahmed said, well, Jacob, you are the first person mm. in my entire life to ever wow. hold me. Stunning, staggering. And he said, and there's something happening in my heart. I'm experiencing something in here and I have no idea what it is. And Jack was out to share that he was actually encountering and experiencing, not just hearing about, mm. he was allowing God himself to touch his heart. And God was doing an amazing work deep within the heart of this young man. That's amazing. an amazing, that's a beautiful story. Amazing, amazing. Um, yes, thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Fantastic. And, and I trust you've got plenty of stories like that, you know, uh, living and working among these kids for such a long time. Uh, I hope you're accumulating and writing those stories down and use them to good effect. Uh, you know, guys, we started out talking about how you gave it all up for a pole of great worth to be sold out mm -hmm. for Jesus. Jesus did say to us, if we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and I believe seeking first his kingdom is seeking the purposes of God, the will of God and, and the work of God in our lives. The place, in fact, where we live is part of the kingdom of God. Uh, and then all these things will be added to us as well. Has the Lord provided for you? Is he meeting your needs? Yes. He's a good father and he's faithful um, and he does provide our needs. Not to say that we don't have wobbles along the way. Um, you know, I think we all experience those moments in the in the middle of the night when all the thoughts and concerns of the world and the future creep in. Um, but God constantly reminds us um, that he is the one who will sustain us. Mm. Isaiah 46 verse 4, I am the one who will sustain you. I am the one who made you. I will mm. carry you even to your old age and gray hairs, which is very reassuring for me because believe you me, it is going a bit gray even though you can't see it right now. Um, and he is good and he is faithful and he does provide. That's not to say that we don't have needs on an ongoing basis, especially as a ministry. So even right now, we've just been given a, a crazy opportunity with the government. Uh, two weeks ago, we were invited to the headquarters of the Directorate of Children's Services here in Kenya. And we met the Director of Children's Services and we, are, we signed an official agreement between Route 61 and the Kenyan government to release Route 61 to go into all the institutions under their care, the statutory children's institutions, 30 of them across the whole nation and take the love of God in there. And it's just an amazing opportunity. It's a huge, it's a certain growth of our capacity. It's not something we're going to step into tomorrow, but what a great opportunity. And we do need resources to do that, resources in terms of people, resources in terms of finances, all kinds of resources. And you know what the beautiful thing is that we're learning about God is that he creates space and he creates capacity because he wants to fill it. Yeah. And we are just thankful for that because and that's we're just really excited. Yeah. We haven't got enough, but that's okay because he is the God of enough. Amen. And what he has created, he will provide for. Amen. And we really yes. Leave that, Dudley. Honestly. Praise God. That's amazing. Uh, again, I quote the verse, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things that we need in life for life and living will be added to us as well. Derek and Penny Oliver, it's been absolutely marvelous talking with you. Just quickly, do you have a website that we could check out? Yes, it's very simple. It's www.root, as in R-O-U-T-E, 61, the digits, dot net. Root, root 61.net. Okay, not the American route, the English route. R O U T E 61. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the reality show. We pray God's richest blessing upon your work. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you so Bless much. You, Blessings to you all. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Well, praise God. What an amazing couple. How God called them 
to serve him. You know, perhaps just you've been watching up and you feel, well, there could be a calling of God upon my life, but I don't know where to go, what to do. Well, I encourage you today to simply do what Derek and Penny did. Say, Lord, here I am, use me, you know, serve, to serve you. And the Lord will give you ideas, he'll give you a thought, he'll put a, a thought into your heart. And he may call you, like Derek and Penny, to give it all up, to be sold out for Jesus. Referring again to that parable uh, of the, the pearl of great worth. The man sold everything he had to buy the pearl of great worth. Now that pearl had value. And God may be calling you to give it all up and you think that you're losing out in life. Well, you're not really. You're giving it up for the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God is a pearl of great worth. And if you seek first that kingdom of God, Jesus has promised that everything that you need for life and living, food, clothing, housing, accommodation, and even, yes, recreation in your life will be added to you as well because he's faithful and he will do it. I encourage you to seek first the kingdom of God. I encourage you to open up your heart and say, Lord, here I am. I want to give it all up for Jesus. I want to seek your kingdom. I want to do what you've called me to do and to be. Could be also that you're watching up today and you think we're talking a lot of nonsense. <laughs> what is this? It's all, you know, giving it all up. Well, the truth is, Jesus gave it all up for you and for me when he gave himself on the cross. God loved the world so much that he gave up his only son so that if he died and rise, rose from the dead, the righteous one for the unrighteous, we could be saved from our sin and come to the full knowledge of the grace and the truth of God. And that's the good news. Now, if you'd like to know more about that, you've got some questions, you'd like to me to pray with you. I'd love to give you my personal email address. It's dudley at surereality.net. Drop me a note, I'd love to hear from you. So it is from Dudley Anderson and the team here at Revelation. Thank you for joining us. Till next time, keep your eyes on Jesus and God bless you.